Are we rolling? Oh good. Hey guys, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I, after I did my card making cart the other day, I asked if anybody was interested in seeing what was in this um, tall chest of drawers. And this is just one of those plastic um, set of, I think there's like 10 drawers in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, that you can see at like Joann's or other big box stores. This was rainbow colored and my daughter had painted it different shades of silver and gold. And then I just grabbed some silver spray paint after she was done with it and gave it a coat of all the same color. Um, it looks just kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe kind of industrial. And it's really handy. So I'm going to show you what's in these drawers and um, hopefully you can help you organize your stuff too. So I'm just going to tip the camera down here. So you can kind of see it. Oh, hopefully, um, I'm just going to tighten the thing here. Okay, so in the top drawer, uh, so hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. You've probably seen it in my uh, studio. I'm going to scoot back just a little bit. And in this top drawer, I have a just an envelope and uh, a folder with my Nina uh, Classic Crest Super Smooth cardstock. This is the solar white stuff that I like to stamp and use for alcohol markers. So I just keep that in there because the cardstock can be hard to identify if you don't have it labeled somehow. So I just keep that there. And I have this stamp mat. This is by Carabelle Studios. Um, I use one half for like poking, one side for like poking, stitching, and brads and stuff, and the other half for like stamping. And it just gives me a nice firm yet squishy surface to um, stamp on and then I've got my dye inks and I have them in a tray system I can take the whole drawer out but these are my mini cubes and I tend to use these more than anything and um, they're just right there and all that fits together and I don't have an issue with all that in one drawer because I could pull the tray out and I can get to whatever I need. This next drawer down, I have my VersaFine Clear pads and my metallic pigment pads and my regular pigment pads. So I don't use these quite as often. I really like the VersaFine Clear for, I like to stamp with those and then clear heat emboss because it just looks so sharp and so pretty and it gives me such a crisp impression. So I have those right there. I don't even use them as often as the mini pads, but I do use them quite a bit. And here I keep my normal pads, just the like the blacks and clear embossing that I use all the time. Now my memento black is up there because I just re-inked it, so I wanted to keep it flat. Um, because sometimes they can leak if you have them really freshly inked, but other than that, they're fine on their side. I also have um, some pigment inks back here and I have these um, fabric inks that I picked up because they were really cheap on clearance and I had all these grand plans that I, how I was gonna use them. So I actually have to put that into practice. But um, but they are, they are there. Now this drawer has a lot of just stuff I use every time I craft. I've got a folded piece of paper for embossing powder. I've got the classic, the famous foam squares. Bunches of those back there. Another a piece of scrap paper for when I need to rub over the back of a stamp. I've got my little bow maker, more foam things. These are my little paper piercers when I want to do faux stitching. I have ones for double lines, single lines. I got edge distressors. This is a diamond tool, one of those diamond painting tools that I've got a little stick -um thing that goes with this and I use that to set sequins and rhinestones and things because um, it's easier to place them into glue when you don't have them on your fingers. This works really well. My friend, um, my niece Sarah gave me this because she gets one of these in every kit, I think, of her diamond paintings. So she gave me this in one of those little squares of wax, which is right here. And then it just works really well for picking up sequins and whatnot and placing them in glue. I've got this uh, bag. This is, oh my gosh, this is just a piece of cotton cloth that I sewed and I put cornstarch in. And um, I see that there is a famous company on a famous stamp store selling tiny little jars of embossing magic powder for eight bucks. And literally it's a, like a tablespoon or two tablespoons of cornstarch. So just use cornstarch guys, it works just as well. Um, I got post-it tape for making masks and I got a few jars of embossing powder. I got my stamp my jig for when I need to precisely position something, glue sticks, liquid glues. Um, and pokey tools because I use those a lot. These are the ones from the Dollar Tree. I like them because they've got a score scoring tool on the back. So if you've got a score pal and you lose your, your little scoring thing, you've got one right there. It's handy. All right. The only thing I don't like about these is you have to be careful because the, the drawers kind of want to come off the runners sometimes. So I, I haven't really had a problem with it, but if you're going to really load up the drawers, which I don't recommend, that could give you some issues. Here again, more ink pads. I have some die pads that are full size, Simon Stamp and a Lawn Fawn. I've got these Whisper pads. And the reason I kept these, these are pretty old, but I love them because they've got a foam 
applicator so I can actually do direct to paper and it gives me the look of like using a blending foam. So I re-ink these with my Stampin' Up! reinkers or whatever I have, whatever dye-based reinker that's close or I'll mix up a color if I need to. So I love them for the applicators. They haven't crumbled at all and I've had them for a long time. Um, they just apply ink beautifully. And then I've got my Kaleida color pads which I really love for brayered techniques. They're a rainbow pad and you store them apart like that and then when you want, you want to use them you push them together. So they're just really, they're just really nice. Um, I believe they still make these, but they're not very popular for some reason. I really like them though. Um, and they're fine to store on their side like this because the ink can't run into one another. Oh, we're off the rail again. So that's a heavy, that's kind of a heavier drawer. Um, the next row down, I have all my Distress Oxide pads and my Distress inks and my blendable inks, reactive inks. So like Harmony or Prism inks, those are all also reactive. So they're all in the same drawer because the only thing I use these for are direct to ink or direct to paper techniques and uh, inking techniques. I don't stamp with them. So they, I keep them together because I use them together. So that's how I like to store things. I like to keep like with like. Now this drawer is a little excessive. I have a ton of um, clear blocks and I actually only had a few in here and I had the rest in the old studio, but then I thought that's silly. I might as well just keep them all together. Um, I do have a lot, but it's handy when you have a lot of stamps going on a project, a lot of unmounted stamps. And um, I also have a little, uh, little holder there for my blending sponges from Local King Rubber Stamp, which are really good for stenciling, but I haven't really had much luck with them for other things. And in the back, I've got um, my homemade stamp cleaner. And in it, I have this the stamp chamois, but um, this is made with two paint pad edgers, and I really like this. I just put a little soapy water on this side, scrub my stamp, and then dry it off on this side. But it's just two paint pad, uh, two paint pad edgers. They're uh, glued into an old baby wipes box with foam tape to make them high enough to scrub your stamps. But this is really good for those bigger stamps that don't fit, that are bigger than a baby wipes case. But this can get funky after a while. I was surprised at how long it takes for this to get stinky when it's wet and closed into one of these. But after a couple weeks, it will get there, trust me. Uh, and it's not pretty. Uh, underneath, I've got my score buddy, just a tiny score pal. I don't often use this. I like my bigger one, but um, I generally don't need it when making cards because I pre-score and pre-fold all my cardstock in the other room. I chop, a down, chop them down on my big guillotine chopper and I score them with my big score pal. But this is nice if I have a you know sheet of cardstock I haven't scored that I need to score. I've got my crocodile punch. I've got a big roll of thin foam tape. I have um, my corner chomper, which is just a heavy duty corner rounder, really. I've got this little trimmer, which I think is about ready to bite the dust, quite frankly. Um, just a small guillotine trimmer. And then I've got this uh, little fo the little uh, stamp positioner that my friend Jody made me out of a DVD case. Um, and that works good if I have a layered stamp that's really um, tricky, that doesn't, that is, you know, hard to line up. That's really nice. I don't really feel like I need a misty because. Um, I have that and I, I don't use it very often. Now down here I have my blending sponges and blending brushes and um, that that works great. I like these color dusters. I haven't used them too much since I got the these style of brushes here that are just in a jar on my table because they're kind of pretty and they're handy. Um, but I do I do like them. They're really handy and I loved them until I got those other brushes. But things things improve and change. And then on the bottom I've got some templates that um, are actually very handy for, you know, if you need to cut a circle and you don't want to go out and get, like, I keep my die cutter in the other room and I just prep all my, my projects out there and then I come in here to do them. Sometimes I need to cut a circle or something like that in here, but I generally have everything prepped and pre-cut in the other room and bring it in here to film. And this is my adhesive roller and I use that in pretty much every card making project. So there you have it. Ooh, I forgot to loosen the thingy here. Ooh, I'm, I'm a ghost. I look like a ghost. Perfect for Halloween. Boo! <laughs> um, oh, there you have it. That's what's in this tall um, thing of card making supplies. I also have a set of Stampin' Up! the old style, like the fabric um, ink pads, like from a few years ago. A friend of mine was getting out of being a demonstrator and she sold off all of her larger ink pads. And so I purchased them. I didn't have any big ink pads at that time. I think I just had the Whispers ones. And that was great. I still use them when I need a certain color. But like I said, I go for the mini pads first because I can fit more on my table when I'm working and filming. Um, and probably if I had, you know, life to do over, I would just get the mini pads, except for my blacks and browns and Versamark. 
where I want the larger pads because I'm using them all the time on larger stamps, I probably would just stick to the small ones. Um, but I have them and I'm using them and um, and they are handy. I mean, you do ink up a stamp faster, but you know, if I if I was what if I am like recommending it to a new stamper, what to get? I would say get the mini cubes and get reinkers because they're going to save you so much space and um, then you can have more colors. And there's really not much of a downside except for like get the bigger pads in black and brown because you'll, you know, you'll probably go through those colors. You'll probably want to have fewer, you're going to use them every day. So you don't want to be pat, 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 pat 20 times to ink a stamp up. You want to pat, pat like three or four times. But other than that, the colors, I would just go for the mini pads. But there you have it, more than you probably wanted to know, but there it is, and I hope you found it useful. Um, I get into every single one of these drawers when I'm making a card, and I make cards once or twice a week, so I said I might as well have them in here, um, rather than run back and forth. Because <laughs> if it's stuff I always use, I just want it close to hand. Uh, things that I'm not going to use that often can be stored over there, like, you know, a Christmas stamp. I'm going to use that, like, one month out of the year. I'll just bring them over when I need them and then file them back away. Um, and uh, I'm fortunate that I have that extra space. You don't need to have this much stuff. You do what works for you. And because, you know, I'm filming for my business, that's why I have the extra space for storage. But I don't feel like you have to have that much space. I mean, this is new. This room, this filming room is new to me this year because, um, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the heat more than anything because it was very, it's very cold out there in the unfurnished part of the basement. I'm just rambling now, so I guess I will call it a day. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like videos like this where I show you what's in the drawers. And uh, until next time, happy crafting. Bye.